Good morning. How are you doing, lovely people, uh, on this um, gorgeous day? Um, this is your Yoga Solutions Live. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva on this Tuesday, the 16th of June, 2020. I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are. Yes, yeah, so here we are. Yoga Solutions Live. How nice. I, I, I like days like today where um, I can have the doors open. You know, isn't that nice? And uh, I'm, I'm, I recently made an addition, the, the orchids, they come from um, Abigail's meditation room and treatment room. She, uh, I'm, I live with Abigail now and um, I, I use it as a, uh, for meditation and she does her healing treatments and tachyon um, practices there. And, uh, you know, since the lockdown, I've been the only one on the receiving end, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, but uh yeah um yes yeah, so, so i i thought i brought the uh, i would bring the orchids here because i've got got familiar with meditating with them so that's um nice addition um yeah so I, i've actually got a question today uh barbara barbara from ireland who who uh, did my course up in um up in uh scotland uh she's uh She's back at home and online and available. And she's um, left a, a question, which was around uh, triangle pose. Uh, how did she put it now? Something like how she'd like to find her triangle pose again. And and then there was a partic uh, possible follow-on question around Ardha Chandrasana, you know, the um, one-legged balance where you open out half moon pose. So. Um, it's nice. It's nice to just have a posture to work with today. I, I like looking at these. I, I, I like applying to all things from existential issues to to straightforward. How do I sort my big toe out? You know, <laughs> mm. it's, it's it's all the same to me. It all has as much depth and meaning. So, um, and uh, yeah, postures are a really good thing to play with because they uh, you know by definition this is something I'm, I'm fond of saying about um, yoga postures by definition they they are difficult to achieve not the posture now, it's easy to make a posture what's difficult to achieve is asana asana is comfortable seat and um, it, it's it's so easy to hold yourself in a shape and then the moment you stop holding you collapse out of it and um, and um, unfortunately, we think that that's what uh, postures are, uh, because that's the experience. But um, the idea is that you're meant to find a comfortable seat, as in you need to be able to let go and remain supported in the arrangement that you wish to be in. That's that's for me. That is asana. And for that to be true, a whole lot of things have to be in place um, like um, good arrangement of bones and you know that would be the structural thing that would be the um, alignment thing that the Iyengar bangs on about um, and a way of you know an interactivity the way you get there the way the way you find that kind of support is by relating to contact not just organizing yourself in space and expecting to be supported because uh, the body will support you, but that's not the point. The point is that the breath is the very thing that is um, supporting you. So, um, yeah, so we get the experience of lightness and, you know, letting go and comfortable seat. Asana. So let's uh, change scene so we can have a look at this particular pair of things. Welcome back, Barbara. So let, let us begin. So triangle, triangle pose. Um, triangle base. Let's put it. Let's put myself on full view so I can stand up. So a, a triangle base. Um, I'm a little bit wonky. Let's just adjust that. That should be about it. Yeah, so uh, what, uh, when we're looking to find this asana thing, this comfortable seat thing, 
Um, the thing that goes wrong is is people organise themselves into this sort of broad base, and then they fold and they experience holding patterns around the hip. Um, and it's because your weight is bending forwards, and those muscles seem to be um, those muscles seem to be the ones that have to hold you up. Um, that's when you're not interacting with the ground. If, on the other hand, you engage with touch, then the way you support yourself, the way you use that touch, can give you core responsiveness, as in um, the downward action will support you away from the ground, but what it supports is back through the bones, is ideal, as opposed to sort of pushing against the joint, it, it supports up and through a joint. Um, and then the, the touch itself, the engagement itself, causes a core responsiveness with the release of the breath. So the foot going down invites the belly to move back, and when you release the breath with that, you get this fluid upward release that sort of gives you a, a sense of being supported in the front of you but the spine gets a chance to rest through to that support so that's what we that's what we need to organize um, the trouble is <laughs> as soon as you bend forwards you're likely to do stuff that stops that from happening as in you, you're likely to lever your lever your weight around around uh, the joint that is taking you know um, that seems to be needed to carry your weight so I, I have an approach to triangle uh, that sort of helps you find out how to not do that and it's to do with these um, these muscles around the tops of the thighs here the groins and and the very top of the um, quads if you as you fold if you roll over the front foot so you so that you sort of roll out onto the heel then it's much easier as long as the foot's active it's not it's not a floppy thing if the foot's sort of there as part of the expression of supporting yourself with the heel then as you roll back and dip at the hip you should feel that these muscles are soft it'll be hard work for the back leg because that has to take your your weight and that's where you're giving the weight because essentially in triangle pose you need the, the, the base to be equal when you get there. But this softening in the thigh is the thing that allows you to create space away from it on the inside. So you, you're not holding yourself up with these muscles. And you, you can get this sense of space in the front hip as the front thigh bone drops back. And and of course the back leg is having to work a bit to support you but then you use the back foot you keep this foot as it is at sort of 90 degrees being used as a foot but you use the back foot to send yourself forwards over the, over the front one so until you can activate the touch of the front of the foot as well so you, you leave that space in the groin and then when the outer edge comes to the ground you should feel more support back in that direction the job then is to put the ball of the foot down without closing up the hip so that has to happen from the ankle and you should feel some different muscles around the thighs working around the outside of the buttocks and so there's still a sense of resting back through this thigh but with the touch of the foot now when you give your weight which is from the spine here when you give your weight forwards through that foot, the thigh stays quiet and rested back, spacious, soft. And you're leaning into the support of the back of the leg. So that's the, that's the front leg. And that, that allows you to leave this front hip far enough back for the back hip to be forwards. And that's what we need, is we need a, a level base. Most people turn, have a wider stride and turn the foot out. And that tends to make you push against yourself. But um, if you have, if the back foot whoops, is turned out a bit, 
then that's a, that'll be a tight a tightening across the base of the spine. So with that front hip dropping further back and able to um, to the touch of the heel, you need to keep this foot strong. If it goes soggy, then you'll stop being supported by it. So you need to keep the foot touching the ground. With this thigh able to move back, then the pelvis can be central, which means that the back foot can turn to face forwards. And then, so you're leaning weight through the front column of this leg with the thigh soft, and, then, and you've got just as much facility to give weight to the back foot. So you could try taking the weight onto the ball of the foot, widening between the legs to get the little toe corner to touch the ground and then you also have the possibility of this back leg thigh to, to drop back as long as the front of the foot stays supporting you um, to drop back with the touch of the heel until that can arrive in contact with the heel so that both heels are supporting up through the spine and so you're left relaxed in the thighs the touch of the feet are causing um, the core of the body to move away from the ground which means as that happens you your spine can drop towards the ground to meet it to meet the away from the ground release and that happens along the uh, fluid core of the body from the feet it happens in the chest so that you get supported away from the ground so the spine behind it can drop through and then little by little as you um, give weight then the front leg arm can drop the shoulder can drop which means the top shoulder releases away from the ground but it's all based on being on your feet with your thighs and groin soft resting back into the space behind you meeting that space from your touch and engagement through the feet from the feet back through the heels that supports you away from the ground and allows you to travel through the axis of the spine and it's a breath by breath response that is not in that does not involve holding yourself down with your pelvis instead it involves a rhythmic relationship to the ground that allows you to feel supported even ever more so through the spine so from heels to head it's like i'm leaning on something in my head my heels are at the other end and then the spine can is free to turn in between those things Whew. so that's that side um, let's do the other side and I'll, I'll take it into Adha Chandrasana so um, yeah finding support from the front of the foot is key to this because if you if you put weight on the heel then the body tends to collapse into into uh, sort of passive support whereas if you put weight onto the front of the foot then the foot responds and it gives you a chance to rest that thigh back the, the way I did it on the other side was to drop back to, to dip back with the foot active so that I can really feel that thigh soften and the thigh bone move back away from me on the inside and then add the touch of the foot by sending myself forwards little toe ball of the foot now I've got that touch I can rest down because the foot going down supports my belly up with this space in my groin with that thigh resting back that front leg pelvis being sent back the back leg pelvis can be sent forwards which means I can right my back foot if I want to find better support for this hip then I can find the front of the foot <sighs> find support from it and then big toe little toe the thigh can drop back with that heel 
and then when the heels get involved with support they support up through my spine whilst the fronts of the feet support the front of the away from the ground the spine rests into that support and is propelled up from the heels through to the head and if I can find that through the breath the whole thing and its release then with the release of the breath I'm likely to turn from the ribs rather than pulling the pelvis around I'm likely to turn from the ribs because it's from the spine all from the feet there's no point putting effort into lifting the arm if you if you, if you do that it, it it stiffens the spine you want to feel supported through the spine and then the fingers can grow away from the central axis of the spine with the release of the breath now to take this into Ardha Chandrasana similar sort of thing you, you put the way to go to the front, of the front foot do it the other way around so the ball of the foot and the little toe corner and from there you should be able to get support through the whole body and w with one leg is the intention then that foot has to be stronger of course but it's not tense it's it's about finding through you know the weight is going down through the front of the foot the toes are growing away from that and the result is back and up through this ankle back and up through this relaxed knee the knee can relax because the thigh drops back with the heel and when that takes my weight because of that space the front of the foot going down supports the core of the body away from the leg the heel dropping back allows the thigh to release back with it and the touch of the heel supports through the axis of the spine the front of the foot supporting the front of the body away from the ground the heel supporting all the way because the hips aren't being pulled around all the way through to the head so even in this position I can get a sense of through the spine rather than having to lift it because the spine is resting into the support that is coming up through the front of the body the core Oops. Oh, got a bit tired because I was talking about it and demonstrating Try the other side. So little toe. The heel drops back with the thigh. As soon as you lift, you pull your joints. If the weight going down is a response that supports you in the core of the body, and through the joints, from the heel, through the joints, through the spine, from the heel, then breath by breath that expression of through the spine particularly with the release of the breath can be the center of your opening out in space breath by breath we release tension into the touch and the touch rebounds through us so we release through space cheated a little bit by using my hand but there you go such is life uh, there you go Barbara I hope that was useful um, I think that'll do me I, I'm going to uh, how, how, I've got 10 minutes let's um, let's just lie down so this becomes a bit of a class Organize things so that the feet are underneath the knees, the pelvis supported by the touch of the heels. And that all bringing together through the spine a little, shoulders up and back to get space between your wings and your ribs. And then the release of the breath in the chest, away from the face, invites the spine to come through the heart. 
And then um, we're going to look for similar sort of relationships. This, the front of the body, just because it's up, um, we get support. We get the front of the body releasing back towards the ground in this situation with the release of the breath, and it happens quite easily because of gravity. But the the contact that you make, so if you turn the right hip underneath you, the contact that you make, if you engage with that contact, will help the core of the body engage in the same way. And I know it's towards the ground, but you're using the ground to invite the front of the body back. And that is true for the groins and thighs as well. So if when you use your feet, you push the groins forwards, um, you're not finding support. What needs to happen is this stuff at the front needs to drop back with the release of the breath. And it does so when we relate to our earth. So same, same with the head and this arm. If you want the chest to empty better, you need to engage from the release of the breath through your contact, through the head and the arm. If you want the groins to empty and not hold your weight, you need to engage through the edges of the feet and the pelvis as you release the breath, so, so that the pelvis empties away from the front of you. Meanwhile, the same contact, especially to do with heels, heels of the hand, heel of the head, heel of the feet, heels of the feet, will help the spine sort of come forwards at the rounded parts which is why you travel through the spine when you use the heels. It doesn't always happen. If you land on your heels without feet, that won't, you'll have a different response. It will send the secondary curse forwards. But if you have whole contact, if you have whole feet, whole hands, then the engagement through heels can help the secondary curves behind the heart, behind the, within, the sac uh, within the pelvis, sacrum, to move forwards through the body so that when you use your feet, when you use your base, you can travel through the spine. And doing so allows the thoracic spine to move with the release of the breath. Which means that the ribs move with the release of the breath. And it's ribs that are meant to turn you. You're not meant to hang off your back. You're not meant to hang off your lum lumbers. When I see people, people doing that to themselves, it's a kind of distortion of the lumbar spine. It's not very good for your back. But moving through it and, move, and allowing rotation and side bending, etc., to happen from the ribs is much healthier. And you see it in, in animals, you know. When animals move, they move from the, from the ribs a little, quite a lot more than, than most humans. Let's do the other side. <sighs> Accessing this dropping back towards the spine in the front of the body in this case towards the ground but we need to engage with our earth to develop that sense of support so through the feet through the hip through the contact the head is making and the wing is making this underside shoulder and ribs are on the ground so you can use it all and what we're looking to achieve from that contact is an emptying away from the front of us towards the spine so in here it's towards the tail in the, in the groins it's towards the tail in the belly it's towards the sacrum upper belly it's towards the um, lower back ribs in the chest it's towards the, the heart um, in the brain it's towards the back of the head but it happens because of our contact with the earth, not because, um, I mean, it will happen a bit because of gravity anyway, in the situation. But we want to learn about how to relate these movements to our relationship to the earth, not to gravity, not to heaviness. Our relationship to contact will cause this to happen. And then the contact itself can be used to invite the rounded parts of the spine, the bits we normally hang off, to move forwards so that we get a through the spine feeling from the base up. And when you use your feet, 
you move up through the heart, past the heart, and out through your head. The result is axial movement, axial breath, and a movement from the ribs that allows you to turn. And then you can relax. So after that, uh, if you just lay out the legs, slide them away from you and have a little relaxation. Hopefully you should be feeling the benefits of that. Gone a little bit dark, let's brighten things. Good. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you for the question, Barbara. It's nice to have you back. Um, what's occurring? Well, I have my class later today. I've got a class in half an hour and another one at 6.30. It's uh, free for gold members, uh, but uh, £12 drop in or £6 if you want to uh, do a view only version of the class. Uh, you have to type in the coupon code VIEW ONLY in capital letters with a dash in between. Um, that's uh, uh, later on this morning and this evening and tomorrow morning, 11am, it's another one. Uh, it's £12 a class or uh, if you become a gold member it's free. Um, this Saturday I've got another of my uh, rather popular Saturday morning retreats. I call them retreats because it's, cause it's, uh, it's about treating yourself and re-treating yourself, you know, doing it regularly. So it's every Saturday, uh, 10.30 till one. Um, and it's a lovely workshop. It's a, always a nice group of people and full range of experience. And uh, we, I, I get to build a class out of what people would like to look at. And um, we, we have, so we have 10, 15 minutes at the beginning to decide what to do and uh, ch you know, check in with each other and see how we're feeling and a couple of hours of yoga, sometimes with a little break in the middle for, for bits of more Q&A and that sort of thing. And then a good sort of 15, 20 minutes re deep relaxation guided at the end. It um, sets people up for the weekend and um, very popular. So I, th I think uh, there are places left. Um, it gets booked up very fast. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and book. Um, yeah, that's uh, this Saturday coming, which is solstice i think um or uh, the night uh, the night before solstice so um yes that, that's coming up um uh, other things that are coming up the last sunday of june i am running a um an ongoing training day for yoga scotland uh, change change your perspective transform your practice it's um full day and they're doing it very reason reasonable rate uh, um, i think it's 45 pounds for the day or, or 40 i can't remember which and uh, and there's view only option as well which is i think just 25 um, and uh, you book that through them but the link's on my website that's towards the end, end of june and um, i'm contemplating uh, my summer retreat I, every August, I, first week of August generally, I do a, an intensive retreat for my dedicated students. Uh, I, because of the online thing, it's going to change format slightly. I'm thinking of doing six days in a row of two and a half hour morning workshops. I, I did um, um, a brief, a short um, uh, retreat recently and uh, because it was an all-day one that's in you, you came in the morning and then you checked in again um, about late afternoon uh, I only got a few people but it was uh, it was amazing just doing that for two two days uh, the participants said that, that their practice moved on in, in a brand new way because of the consistency of just doing it two days so um, I'm, what I'm thinking in, in August, I'm going to do a six day daily morning workshop retreat. Um, I might make an optional get together in the afternoon, late afternoon to, for Q&A and stuff. Um, 
so that uh, and I might even make it drop in on, on a daily basis depends on the numbers but um, yes uh, and it's going to be uh, about it's going to be themed so that on body relationships uh, I, I've got the idea for my next course um, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be you know the following the haptic proprioceptive and core intelligence I think it's going to be about body relationships and I wanted to call it the the um, the ultimate body hack because <laughs> because um, uh, one of my students said it was like it was like sort of getting a, a body hack as in you know you, you find these tricks that really um, wake up potential in the body but um, body and hack is a bit aggressive sounding so I'm not going to call it that um, but following on from the sensory intelligence courses it, it's I'm thinking possibly I'm going to call it structural intelligence so it's about how the body relates to itself and I'm going to launch this course um, with this six-day retreat in um, end of July, beginning of August, and uh, I haven't quite fixed the dates yet. Uh, and if that's if that's of interest, you need to let me know because um, I, I'm going to give priority to my dedicated students because um, it's 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 going to be a, a, a very deep process. And, uh, and priority will go for the dedicated students and anyone else that wants to fully immerse. Uh, it'll be a yeah, six-day course and followed by a six-week online um, Sunday sessions course. So um, it, it'll be in two parts. The first part will be doing everything, covering everything in a week, which will be incredible. And then the f subsequent week... Um, around weekly it won't be every week because i've got other things on sundays um it'll be um six subsequent sessions uh, on online again two and a half hour sessions on sunday mornings um th and they're they're independent of each other you can you can uh, do one and not the other but um i think my dedicated students will do both and it'll because the body relationships thing is that is so deep um we'll get the overview over the week and then we'll do the individual details over the six weeks. Um, so that's that's my idea. Uh, I've only just formulated it. So um, if you're listening, thank you for listening. And I'll, I'll get some details up about it soon. Um, other than that, um, that's about it. Um, I enjoyed that session. So thanks for the question, Barbara. And um, I shall look forward to seeing you same time, same place next week. Uh, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva. Uh, of, the, of the Aquaviva method, the Enviro Approach to Bodywork, signing off. Much love to you all. Bye now.